Welcome. Today I'm going to be playing the hare and the tortoise. Now let's kind of just go over how this game sort of works. Now, first of all, um, those of you who think you, uh, you know, know the story of the tortoise and the hare and who won the race, well, the tortoise has humbly accepted a request from the hare to have a rematch. And so now all of the animals all over the world have heard about this race. And so three new animals, three new contenders, have joined the race. The hare thought for sure he was going to win this time, but now he's got even more opponents. In this race, you have the hare, the tortoise, the wolf, the fox, and the lamb, or the sheep. And those are our five animals in this race. Now, each one of these animals have a requirement for moving. Each one of them are different in movement. So let's just kind of go over movement, because that's the majority of the race, is them moving down this tract here all the way to the finish line. Okay, so when you go, the animal that's in the starting line first, assuming the hare is in, uh, in the race, in, in the round, each round there's going to be a race, basically, each round. And so sometimes you'll get all of these animals all in the same race, and sometimes you won't. But if the hare is, um, you know, going to go, he goes first, then it's the tortoise, then it's the wolf, then it's the fox, and then the lamb is always last. So if you have a bunch of animals all really close to the finish line, it's that is definitely important because it's always going to be the hare first, then the tortoise, then the wolf, then the fox, and then the sheep that moves. Now, each of us start with seven of these uh, race tile type cards, and there's seven of them all together. And we pick one over here to add to this one as well, which is obviously different from these. And these are the animals that we're going to be betting on. And so for me, I'm betting on these two animals here, which, you know, you guys didn't see that, by the way. Um, I'm betting on these two animals here, and these are supposed to remain secret from my opponents. And they each also have two animals or an animal they're betting on. Because when you choose... You're, you you randomly get this one here. This one here you randomly get. So there's five of these, and you're randomly going to get one of these. And so you don't know what your opponents have, and you don't know what you... So, so, And then after the fact, then you'll get to pick one of the seven cards here. And you'll get to root for your choice of any animal you want out of the seven cards you have as your second choice. So you have two chances. Two chances that... Two of your animals at max will make it to the finish line. Now, in this race, there are points for first, second, and third place. So even if your animal comes in third place, you'll still so score some points. So that's how that works. And then, so that's kind of interesting how that all works. And then, and that's why you have this nice little handy card here, reference card, that tells you all the different things. Now, each of these have an animal on it, each of these cards. And so you're going to play a certain amount of cards out in the race. Now each round can have a maximum of eight cards played. So whoever's the starting player, and each round it'll be a new starting player, whoever's the starting player will get to choose which animal, or animals I should say, they want to put down first. Now I say that because you are allowed to put a maximum of four of the same animal out at one time. A maximum. So if you do that, if you had like, let's say, four tortoise cards, and you put all four tortoise cards out, then the race would begin, and only the tortoise would move. And then your, those four cards would be discarded. Any card that is played is discarded. You'll hold on to the, all the other cards. You won't discard any of the cards you don't actually use, 
to save for later, and then you'll draw until you have six cards again. So if I used the four tortoises and the, only the tortoise moved for the first round, then I would draw four more cards, and I'd pass this on to the next player. Now, that is one way to begin the race of each round. The second way is when eight cards have been placed on the table. So when eight cards, no fewer, and uh, no more than eight can be played. Once eight have been played, then all of the animals will move in their corresponding amount per animal. And so let's go over how that works. So, if the hare, if there is one card to four cards sitting on the table with the hare on them, the hare will always move two spaces. So he will move one space if there's one hare card. He will move, I mean, he will move two spaces if there's one hare card. He'll move two spaces if there's two hare cards. He'll still move two spaces if there's three hare cards. And he'll still move two spaces if there's four hare cards. But here's the thing. And the max, that's the maximum that can be anyway. There can only be a maximum of four of one man. Well, you can't place five hare cards in a single, in a single round. But if he is in first place, or if he is tied for first place, it doesn't matter how many cards have been played, he will not move a muscle, because he will actually take a nap. Just like in the original story, he took a nap. Isn't that right? The hare took a nap. And so in this game, if he is in the lead, or tied for first in the lead, then he will not move at all, because he'll be too busy taking a nap. Now, the tortoise movement is a little different. Even if there are no tortoise cards on the table, the tortoise will move one space up the racetrack, even if there is none. Now, if there's one, two, or three tortoise cards on the table, he will still move just one tile, race tile, on the track. Now, if there are four tortoise cards, then he will move two spaces. So that's the maximum he can move. He can only move a maximum of two and only if all four cards have been played in that round. Now, the wolf, he will move one for every one or two cards that are on the table. So if there's one card on the table, he will move one space. If there's two cards of him on the table, he will still move one space. Now, if there's three or four, he will move one plus how many cards are played. So, for instance, um, or yeah, he will move minus one, basically. So let's say there are three wolf cards on the table. He would move one and two, three. He would move actually three minus two, basically. So if there were three cards out, technically he would move three spaces. But it also says minus one, which means he would be only moving two spaces. The only way he can move three spaces if there's four wolf tiles out. That's the only way he can move three. That's the maximum amount he can move is three spaces, and only if four wolf cards have been played in that round. Now, he has an ability. There are 16 wolf cards in the entire deck, and that's the deck there. There are 16 wolf cards, and it tells you all the numbers here of how many of each of the animals there are. There are 16, but three of those have a howl ability on it. If somebody plays the wolf that has the howl ability, the wolf will howl, it'll freak all the animals out, and the wolf will actually be the only animal moving that round. No matter how many um, animal cards were played that round, only the wolf, only the wolf will move during that round. So that's something to note. But there's only three of them, so it's not likely to happen too often. Then we have the fox. Now the fox, he's crafty. He can move one for every card of him on there, meaning one to four. Once again, you can only have a maximum of four of any particular animal out per round. But if there are four fox cards out, he will move four spaces. So he will actually move four spaces. That's awesome. Now, the sheep is almost as awesome as that because the sheep or the lamb, you know, it can move four spaces as well, one for each of its cards out. However, if there is a river and it comes across the river, it will take a drink of water and will stop at the river for that round. So let's say there were four sheep cards out 
And this guy here was right here. He'd move here, and then that'd be it. Because he'd be too busy taking a drink of water. Because he'd be very thirsty. He can't resist taking a drink of water. And that's how all the movement works and how everything works. So, I think I've explained the majority of how this is all going to work. Now remember, we are the audience. We are, we are betting on who's going to win, basically. That's our job. So that's what we're trying to do. Who knows who's going to win this race? Only time will tell. So let's, in the next video, we'll get started playing this game. And uh, Manta and Ridley will be playing against me. And I think we all know that uh, probably Ridley will probably be betting on his cousin to win. I would imagine so. But who knows what Manta is uh, voting for, for sure. So, let's continue, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video.